What's up, everyone? Brian back to talk about Lonzo Ball and I guess LeVar Ball as well. And is Lonzo Ball worth the trouble in this year's draft or in just in general for the NBA? Lonzo Ball, a great player in college, didn't win anything in college, but we'll see how he does in the NBA. Now, first and foremost, you can't mention Lonzo without his dad, LeVar. And LeVar Ball has just been running his mouth, saying outlandish things about his son and himself, what he could do and beat Michael Jordan and everything. And I think it's just full of crap just to get on the radio, get on news programs, and it's just annoying after a while. And I doubt it's gonna stop when Lonzo goes to the NBA and plays for whatever team that drafts him. So that's gonna be a headache. But let's talk about Lonzo Ball, enough about LeVar Ball. He just runs his mouth and we don't need to talk about him right now. But Lonzo Ball has a different shot and a weird release pattern. And the NBA has had several players to have weird releases in their shot in the final stage of their shooting. And Sean Marion is one of them. Camby is another. Joe Kim Noah. And it's just, it's made into a big deal. But I do think Lonzo Ball's release is going to affect his shot and his ability in the NBA. Now these players have had decent careers, they made tons of money, they've been on various teams, and they've been pretty good, and they're different players, but Lonzo Ball is highly touted. These players were pretty touted in there too, like when Joe Kim Noah was on the Florida Gators when they won back-to-back -back championships in college, and he had a good career. Lonzo hasn't really done much in college, playing one year, had a great freshman year, but he's gonna be one and done, and that's the way of these players nowadays. But the release point, is what we wanna talk about here. So Lonzo Ball is all about his elbow going out, comes down on his left side of his body, he takes the ball from his right hip to the left side of his head and he uses his right wrist to rotate the ball back on plane towards the basket for optimal backspin. And his release pattern is pretty quick. It's been measured to be 0.47 seconds. Clay Thompson's is 0.45 seconds. So it's pretty fast, but they have found that he, when he rushes and he doesn't have time for it, it does struggle to uh, shoot the ball correctly. The other thing is I'm a physical therapist and I see the knee brace on his left knee already. And he's had that for a while. I think he's had it even in high school, but I might be wrong. But I know in college he had it for really the entire season. And when he runs, he does have a genu valgus where his knee goes in pattern, and that's gonna put stress on his medial knee, and it's gonna cause a problem potentially down the road. So he's gonna have to get stronger in his quads and his hamstrings, his eccentric control is gonna have to be better because he can land wrong or twist his knee wrong, and he can be in serious trouble where he'll have to have meniscus surgery or ACL surgery down the road. And we all know that meniscus surgeries and knee surgeries in general can really change a player. I mean, look at Derrick Rose. He was never the same player after the several knee surgeries that he had. Not to say that Lonzo Ball would definitely have a knee injury or need surgery, but it's highly likely if he doesn't improve his strength of his quads and hamstrings, and it just potentially could happen. So hopefully whoever drafts him, they work on that down the road. So let's look at some good release patterns and points. The best one out there is really Steph Curry. And I think his pattern of shooting is some of the most reliable and consistent just from his footwork to his elbow position to his wrist position to where the ball is located you can replicate it easier and he's really one of the best shooters of all time statistically and only time will tell how it goes through the rest of his career steve kerr his coach a lot of people don't know that he's one of the most prolific shooters as well in, in a lot of lists he's one of the top five best shooters of all times here's three of the top five best shooters of steve kerr stephen curry and ray allen and they all have pretty similar release points and positioning on there too. So Steve Kerr, a lot of people don't know, he was on the Bulls, he was on the Spurs, he had player championships, now he has a coaching championship you know, with the Golden State Warriors and it's pretty awesome. But Steve Kerr hit this big shot in the 1997 finals when Jordan passed it to him, you know, hits the big shot down at the top of the key and release points pretty awesome. Now you can't talk about shooting without Larry Bird, Larry the legend. I think Larry is one of the best, for sure, top five best shooters of all time. And Steph Curry's up there as well. But Larry's release point was very similar to the standard straight over the head, elbow straight, but it came out a little bit to the right and you could see a little variation at times. But overall, Larry hit some huge shots in his career and I just, think that Lonzo Ball's release point from down from his right hip to the left side of his head and relying on his wrist to do most of the work isn't the most productive and reproducible shot. These shots that these players have, mainly Steph Curry and Ray Allen, 
are just more reliable, at least on paper and in science, but we'll see how it goes down for Lonzo Ball. But I'm going to trust the faith of Ray Allen's work ethic, Stephen Curry's work ethic, and how they were able to reproduce a shot that was pretty spot on in every form and fashion over their careers. And Lonzo Ball is going to be starting his career. He's not going to have much to go off of right now. He's got one year of college, and then he's going to get drafted into the NBA. Ray Allen played for so many years. Stephen Curry has been playing for a long time. Steve Kerr, Larry Bird, Reggie Miller, all these guys have had long careers, and they've had great stats. And when they needed a big shot, like Ray Allen's Miami Heat shot in the finals against the Spurs, I mean, it doesn't get really bigger than that. Now, Lonzo Ball, I think, is going to be potentially like a Reggie Miller if he's going to be like anybody in the NBA. Lonzo Ball is 6'6", 190 pounds. Reggie Miller was 6'7", 194 pounds. They both went to UCLA. Similar kind of skinny body type. They can knock down some shots. Now, I think Lonzo Ball is a better passer and playmaker. Reggie Miller was predominantly a shooter. He was really good, and he's one of the best shooters of all time. Definitely top five you know, you can debate things all you want, but he's definitely top five. Look at the stats. They both went to UCLA. They're both similar body types. I think Lonzo Ball has the potential to be a Reggie Miller in the NBA, and I think that's a great career. Now, is it going to be Jordan? Is it going to be better than Steph Curry? Only time will tell. I don't think so. And if I was drafting Lonzo Ball, I would want to know how his leg strength are. I don't know about the release, if you're ever going to be able to change it. LeVar Ball is going to be a pain in the butt, so you better be able to deal with that. Good, bad, and different. The Lakers think they're going to pass on him. We'll see when it comes down this year's draft, where he goes, and what's going to happen with it. Only time will tell, but do you think Lonzo Ball is going to be a bust? Do you think he'll have a good career? Do you think he's worth the trouble with his shot, with his dad, with the headache that's so far coming along with this guy. I root, I'm root. i going to root for Lonzo Ball. I hope he does well in the NBA. Help his dad calms down. Hopefully Lonzo gets a good contract and it's good enough to shut the dad up. And Lonzo Ball has a good career. But only time will tell. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. And post your comments below what you think about Lonzo Ball and the NBA. Thanks, guys.